Cool. So we are live. Hello, everybody. How's it going? Um, thanks for joining us. I hope you're all well. Um, yeah, so hack your code. We're here to uh, do a bit of that or learn how to uh, to improve our lives. So yeah, let me just go to the next slide here. So a bit of an introduction. Um, basically, what we're going to do today, tonight, is um, there'll be two presentations, uh, one by yours truly and another by Miss Diana May. Uh, she will cover mental health in the music industry. Um, and I'll be doing some kind of biohacky body spirit stuff, which we will get into soon. So uh, following up uh, from that, then we will have a panel. We have uh, uh, three lovely guests. Diana is one of those. Um, and we will talk about uh, some of the topics that we'll discuss in the presentations and some other, some other cool stuff of interest and um, some inspiring stories uh, from, from the ladies. Um, look forward to those. Uh, and then lastly, we'll open up with a Q&A um, to you guys. You can ask us anything you like at all, and um, we'll try and answer it as best we can. So my name is Dan. Um, I'm an Irish-born artist hailing from Dublin. Uh, I came to Berlin seven years ago and have been trying to hack my mind, body, and spirit for well over a decade through various means and methods, uh, some of which we'll talk about in the presentation and uh, with our lovely guests a bit later on. So a bit of a disclaimer, I am not a medical professional in any shape or form, but I have tried and tested a whole bunch of self-hacks and optimization tweaks over that time and have had some amazing results doing so. So I am I'm more connected to my body and mind and spirit than I've ever been. I've, I've healed traumas, removed ailments that doctors couldn't, uh, rid of myself of brain fog, which was absolutely horrible, had that for a few years. Um, I've become more creative, more focused, stronger, calmer, more caring and more open. Um, I don't mean these as boasting points, um, but simply just a, a statement of truth. Um, my aim here with this presentation is to try to share some of my learnings and hopefully inspire some new ways of thinking and ideally help you become stronger, happier, healthier and more creative. Uh, with all the stress in today's lifestyles, and external stimuli pulling us away from ourselves via phones, socials, Netflix, COVID fear. Uh, it's more important than ever to take time uh, to direct it back inwards and reconnect um, with ourselves. Uh, so yeah, let's go. Um, this, what I'll show you now is in my opinion, the, the pyramid of, of well-being. So it's four parts. The first one is sleep. The second one, is a diet slash fuel. The third one, movement slash exercise. And the fourth one, uh, holistic practices. Um, so from my experience, these are the things that are mandatory to maintain and uh, put real focus into uh, in order to flourish in life. Um, with the bottom two being uh, really the bread and butter and the top being the cherries on top. Um, you can survive without C and D at a cost, but you absolutely cannot function properly without A and B. Um, for me, though, C is 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 critical one. Uh, as C directly affects A, so it should also be mandatory. Uh, if you exercise, you sleep great. There's there's no way around that. If you don't sleep, you can't exercise, or it will stress your body out. If you do anything more than very, very light movement. And if you eat shit, you have no energy for exercise and will sleep horribly. <laughs> you get the picture. So, um, yeah, next slide. Sleep. So, um, a couple of points here of do's and don'ts for sleep. Um, pretty obvious stuff. I'm sure you've all heard some of these before. Um, well, important to reiterate because I think that we're all guilty of not doing these things. Um, so going to bed at the same time, uh, I think we've all struggled with that. Very important one. Uh, something I've kind of been installing recently is a nighttime routine. So 
I have a morning routine, but a nighttime routine is also important. So, you know, disconnect from screens, cool down your room, all that stuff. Um, pretty important to do to aid with nice slumber. Um, another thing that I've been doing the last while is I've turned off my alarms. I don't really use alarms anymore. And this has had a huge, uh, huge impact. I just feel better when I when I wake up naturally, you know, and more. I get I wake up quicker. I don't have this kind of fogginess and like have to rush towards coffee, you know. Um, yeah, uh, sleep sleep should be of super high priority for you and your and your health. Um, it's it's so critical to so many things. Um, have you uh, have you really thought about the type of sleep you're getting? Um, did you know that there's different stages of sleep uh, and things called sleep cycles? Or what about circadian rhythms? Have you ever heard of those? Um, there's a huge delta with regards to impact between quality sleep and sleep. Um, do you wake up feeling refreshed or are you groggy? And as I said, you need to reach for coffee, you know? Um, these are things to pay attention to, you know? If you're groggy, you should uh, look into your sleep patterns and tweak what's going on there. Um, generally speaking, an adult needs about eight hours of sleep. Um, an ideal sleep pattern is around seven and eight hours, seven to eight hours with a, a mid-afternoon nap. Um, something I learned from a book I read this year is we're actually most people are biphasic sleepers, so we're we're programmed to want sleep twice and this is this is explaining it so one big sleep and one little sleep you know and this is at the genetic level which is crazy stuff um, so yeah anyone who naps in the in the day you have justification now <laughs> um yeah but most of the time now people sleep very little you know everyone's stressed and trying to do more and you know some people get four hours of sleep a night you know and this is just madness uh, your body every part of your body and your repair system uh, needs sleep to, to rebuild and to regenerate and restore you know so um it really needs to be um needs to be fixed we need to we need to focus in more on it you know um so yeah uh there are two kind of types of sleep there's REM sleep and then REM sleep and um they're they're both they both serve a a very specific purpose and they operate within the cycles that I spoke about, which are 90 minutes long. And so basically it's, it's important that you're getting a number of full cycles each night. You don't want to wake up in the middle of a cycle because that messes with all sorts of systems in your body. So instead of um, getting up in the middle of a cycle, either go to the, the beginning of that cycle or sleep a bit longer. Um, I've been playing with this for uh, for about, I played with it for about a year and I came to the realization that seven and a half hours for me is is the golden number. I just feel great when I when I get seven and a half hours sleep. So it's definitely uh, something to something to look into. Um like if I sleep 10 hours, I feel worse than if I sleep seven and a half, you know, which is funny. So bad things, uh, some of these are, are blatantly obvious. Um, obviously, removing devices and screens 20 minutes prior to sleep. I am still battling with this, uh, being a nerd and, and a techie, you know, uh, but this is a, a big impact. Um, it just wires your brain, you know, with the blue light coming off the devices, your, your circadian rhythm gets completely messed up and your, your body thinks it's the middle of the day and you're getting into bed and then you're like wondering why you can't sleep, you know? um yeah another thing that's uh oh that's a typo there don't stay lying in bed if you can't sleep get up and, and walk around you know and uh, this is this is important and go back to bed then when you feel tired um also uh this is kind of it's easily easier said than done like don't focus on not sleeping and don't focus on the next day if you can't sleep i think that's usually the things that we all do when we can't sleep but uh if you can try and not think about the day ahead, it's, it's also quite helpful. And uh, yeah, no strenuous exercise before bed is, is, or two hours before sleep because it triggers adrenaline in your body and it takes a while for your lymph system to push that out like, so you can get some nice sleep. Um, yeah, this is a, a topic close to my heart. So that is 
the number of bacteria that you have living inside your gut at this very moment for the average person of 70 kilos, that's the number. That's, um, that's about 200 grams of just bacteria, you know. Uh, each one of those bacteria are doing a specific thing, you know. If you think about that for a moment, that's it's insane. Um, like, why are they there, do you think, you know? Should we, should we help them or should we just abuse them? Um, they can really be our, our friends or our enemies. When we give them what they need, they do unbelievable things for us. Uh, and when we don't, they really can become a, a hindrance and you can have all kinds of things. Science is finding uh, all kinds of connections now between the gut and the uh, neurodegenerative diseases like schizophrenia, um, ADHD, depression. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's a direct connection between the gut and the brain through a thing called the, the vagus nerve. Um, yeah, so it's uh, it, it's really is an important thing to maintain. Um, for a story from from me directly, why this is so close to my heart. Um, I had knee pain for about five years, um, maybe even longer actually. Uh, and I thought it was from martial arts. I got a kick, and my knee kind of came out and went around the side of my leg. And I I thought it was that, but like a year went by, and I still had pain. And I was like, what the hell is going on? And uh, yeah, I, I went to all of the doctors, you name it. I went to this, this, all the specialists, but I still, I still had pain and they all told me I was fine. And so I kind of just gave up on normal doctors. And uh, I happened upon a, a podcast about, um, about uh, the microbiome. And I said, oh, I'll give it a go. So I got my gut tested and um, yeah. I, I followed the, the recommendations. I got some uh, specific supplements of specific type of bacteria. I removed gluten and sugar from my diet and uh, cut down on some other stuff. And um, yeah, my, my pain just vanished, you know? So uh, it's, uh, it, it blew me away. You know, I was so conditioned to the, you know, the doctors are, are right, you know, oh, it's just me, I'm, I'm weird, something's wrong with me. But um, the long and the short of it, Love thy gut. So diet slash fuel. The yays. Get your microbiome tested, guys. Honest to God, I'm shouting this from the rooftops now for a few years. Everyone that knows me knows about the microbiome. <laughs> it's very important. Um, there's a, a bunch of different places you can get your gut tested now. You send off a little lovely package of poo and uh, they test it in a lab and they will tell you uh, very specifically what, what's going on in your body at this moment in time, um, which it's fantastic. Um, so, yeah, some of these are self-explanatory as well. Um, you know, eat whole foods, um, cook more. This is a very important one. Eat at the same time. I know Miriam, you like this one. Uh, eat at the same time daily. Uh, eat slowly. That's something that I am still trying to learn. Um, and stopping before I'm full. I usually just eat until I'm completely stuffed, you know, and then I wonder why I'm bloated and gassy, you know. Um, but the, these are all things that uh, they're easy enough to tweak, but they have a huge impact on, on your body, you know. Um, the uh, like Western diets are destroying destroying our bodies and, and causing disease, uh, which we go to the doctors for, and then they feed us with drugs, which make us more ill over time. Uh, constant band aid after band aid, uh, yeah, it's 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 kind of silly, you know. Uh, we're very conditioned to just believe what they tell us without question. Um, when the facts are there now that certain things are just not working and, and need to be changed, you know, a couple of examples, antidepressants being overprescribed, antibiotics being overprescribed and just destroying people's uh, gut flora and making uh, resistant strains of bacteria, uh, which is an even bigger problem than sedatives being over, uh, overprescribed, you know, um, gut medication, NSAIDs, which are non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, which is like uh, any anti-inflammatories, ibuprofens and stuff. These things are okay 
for a short period of time, but people that are taking them too much and it's really disrupting their, their lovely little bacteria uh, ecosystem. Um, yeah, instead of approaching things from a holistic way, uh, we're told to take the pills, eat, eat the fast, easy food, stay sick uh, and just keep going. Um, you'll be fine or we're stamped with a condition and, and that's it, you know, meds for life, no fix. Um, Western uh, medicine has saved us multiple times from near extinction, but we need a firmer update there as I've currently personally witnessed my own and other people's bodies healing themselves fully without medication when the doctor's orders were, you must take this or you're screwed. And the, this band-aid approach really hurts me. Um, yeah, unfortunately, um, a number of years ago, my father hung himself after taking 30 years of antidepressants. Um, it, it's just crazy, you know, like his chemistry in his brain was just absolutely destroyed from these substances, you know, uh, and, and like no change in the medication, just here you go, keep taking them, you know what I mean? It's, and, and as he's just going into a darker hole, you know, it's, it's terrible, you know, it's very close to my heart. This topic needs to stop, you know. My mother had, had a mini, mini meltdown a few years later uh, and, and she actually went to like a really good clinic and the, the, the doctors there were very current, you know, and, and up to date. And they, um, they basically just said to her, why are you taking these? You should have never been prescribed these ever. You know what I mean? She was like, oh, can I have the 30 years back that I've been taking these for? You know, it's, it, it has to stop. It's just, it's just awful, you know, and we have to change this. It's really fucking up humans and our, and our brain chemistry. Um, yeah, a little bit of a, sensitive one there <laughs> um another thing yeah antibiotics uh let me go to the next bit here antibiotics avoid them at all costs unless you're dying and you have to take it for an, for a bacterial infection do not take antibiotics just sit with the infection for a bit if it's getting worse you know after a few days of course you know don't die but if you can avoid it, do not take antibiotics. This is a, a huge one. And um, these are broad spectrum nuclear bombs for your gut. They just kill everything, including all the good bacteria, which can take months, years, even, even longer if you've had multiple courses of antibiotics, which some people have have had, you know, and your gut is responsible for all your immunity. So yeah, you 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 get my point. Um and uh, another interesting thing I found out recently, do you know how much um, nutritional information is taught to doctors in medicine? This much. Zero. They get no nutritional uh, training whatsoever. They do not know the difference between calories. It's all the same to them. Calorie is a calorie. This is mind-blowing for me. I cannot believe it. Um, it's beyond done. Uh, yeah, so the nay section, obviously straightforward enough. Um, processed packaged foods are bad for you. Don't eat them. Um, don't eat before bed. Your digestive system needs energy and needs space before it goes into sleep. So give it the space. Uh, another thing that's really bad is eating the same foods all the time which is very easy to do. I think we're all guilty with that. You find a couple of things you like and you just keep eating them all the time. Even a salad, if you eat the same salad all the time, your body is going to go, I do not want this. And it's going to start spitting out antibodies to, 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 to protect itself from the salad because you've just eaten it all the time and you're going to get inflammation and stuff. You need to space out and change your diet uh, in order to be healthy. Um, yeah. Don't drink loads of ice cold drinks and or consume lots of supplements. Um, I was guilty of that for years, you know, but our bodies are able to produce so many different things. We just don't give them enough credit, you know. You just need to holistically love your body and it will make all of the things that you need for uh, survival. Uh, antibiotics I already talked about. Yeah, so this is another really important one for me. Um, movement and exercise you know i think where a lot of people are can be very very stagnant you know or stationary and um 
in terms of uh, uh, your your life energy, you know, um, you you want to be moving your body. You know, you want to have a practice where you're moving your body and generating energy. You know, um, and uh, yeah, it, it's it, it can be if you've never done it, if you're, if you're not used to exercising, you know, it can be a bit of a daunting task. Or where do I start? Or how do I do it? But it's you know, if you just start small figure out what you want to do. If it's like a, a weight that you want to hit or you want to whatever, be able to do five pull-ups, et cetera, you know, set a little, a little goal for yourself, you know, and, and, and stick with it. Make it really crystal clear and, and give yourself like a timeline, you know, so you kind of, you have a, you have a, a clear signpost to go towards instead of like, I want to get fit, which is a bit vague. And then you kind of start going to the gym and then you just fall out of it, you know? Um, and also another thing, the last couple of years I've learned is exercising a little, a lot is better than doing a whole shit ton, uh, a little, you know, and just being really tired for the rest of the week. Um, but yeah, start small, build the intensity and as time goes on and play, you know, make, make it fun. Don't make it this painful thing that you have to do in order to be healthy. You know, it's fun to move your body, you know, you just have to get into it. Um, a very important thing uh, worth mentioning uh, is there's this thing called the lymph system which some of you might know uh, it's basically like our plumbing system recycling waste and removing it from our bodies uh, essentially is, is what it does um, and it's the least understood and most undervalued of all the body systems um, yeah if it stops working we die in 24 to 48 hours and uh, it's twice as big as the circulatory system. Um, there are two times more uh, lymph vessels than there are blood vessels. Crazy stuff. And uh, important to mention and why it's tied into movement is the lymph system, unlike the circulatory system, it relies on breathing, on gravity and movement. So if you're not moving and breathing properly, it basically gets backed up and you have all this sludge moving around your lymph system and you're going to feel tired and yeah, you get the idea. Um, there are, there are so many tools available now and amazing online courses with super fun courses that you can do um, to, uh, to help you, you know, get into your body and move and stuff. And I think um, it's also important to like team up with some friends, you know, it, it's hard to do things on your own, you know, team up with some friends and and commit to stuff together and, and use the peer pressure in a positive way you know um i have a i have a couple of whatsapp groups that i've been doing for for over a year now and um it's just amazing to see people the growth in people you know and just the effect it has when you commit to something not just to yourself but there's other people involved you know you really you will do it more than uh if you just commit to yourself we're all very good at lying to ourselves right don't um yeah don't commit to impossible goals and um, don't give up when it gets hard or or you don't see results immediately um don't uh do the same things and expect different results um very important don't overtrain. i did that for a long time it's not fun for your body and uh listen listen to your body you know what's it telling you in that moment so it's also very important we really uh just get into our heads and we need to tune more into our hearts and our bodies you know um yeah so this is my favorite one probably <laughs> holistic practices um uh, so there are so many things here you i could do a two hours about talking about these things but um yeah uh just what's on the slide here you know breath work meditation psychedelics with healing intention not just taking a lot of psychedelics at a party um gratitude helping others connecting with nature recognizing uh your ego that's a that's a tough one uh but very important um we all need to do more of that um finding your heart space and staying in there more that's also a very important thing and giving yourself love um for the most of my you know life i was very hard on myself you know i was bullied really badly when i was young for a long time and i just 
I was just very hard on myself. Uh, after that, I started doing martial arts and I kind of built up a big shell around myself, you know, uh, and I'm only kind of really starting to realize that that's there, you know, and I need to break that down again and get back into my child and just give it, give it a love, you know, it's very important. Um, so, yeah, I think what I'd like to do to get us into our hearts and connect us with, with ourselves, we'll do a little breath work exercise here. A little bit of a mind and heart uh, exercise, we'll call it. Um, so you can kind of feel the difference of those. Um, so basically, it's very simple. I'm just looking at my phone here to get the app up so I can easily track. So basically, the way the breath work um, works, it's quite simple. So what you're going to do is uh, we'll close our eyes. You're going to breathe in. If you put one hand on your belly and one hand on your chest, so you're going to, and you just breathe normally now, which hand moves first? For a, lot of, for a lot of you, it will be the chest hand. This is chest breathing. This is another thing that we need to fix. We all breathe too shallow, you know? So in a perfect world, when you breathe, your stomach goes out first and then your chest comes out. So for this exercise, what you're doing is, you're basically, we're going to take in 30 breaths, big, deep breaths in, and then you're just letting it out. So I'll, I'll demonstrate what it's like. So you're basically just going. Stomach, chest, and then don't blow out. Just let it, let it out. And then huge breath in, just let it go. Yeah. So we're going to do 30 of those. And then on the last one, I'll say, hold your breath. Take, take the big breath in, hold. And then when I say release, release, and then don't breathe in again. And then just tune in, tune into your body. So we will, we will start now. So breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in. Breathe out, breathe in, deep in, breathe out, deep in, let it go, deep in, let it go, fill your belly, fill your chest, let it go, deep in, let it go, deep in, let it go. Deep in, let it go. Deep in, let it go. Soak in that life force. Deep in, let it go. Deep in, let it go. That's it. Just allow all the sensations. Just feel them. Don't worry. Breathe in, let it go. You can go at your own rhythm. Just breathe in. Let it go. Breathe in. Let it go. Deep in. Just release. Breathe in. Let it go. Breathe in. Let it go. Good. Breathe in. Let it go. Breathe in. Let it go. Breathe in. Let it go. Big, huge breath in and hold. 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 Now, let it out and don't breathe in. Just let it out. And then don't breathe in. And now I want you to just observe. Observe what's happening in your body now in this moment. You've just oxygenated your body. Filled it with lovely chi. <laughs> so just keep holding. You'll be amazed how long you can go now without breathing back in. So we'll go for another 30 seconds. If you really have to breathe in, don't worry. Just take a huge breath in if you really have to. And then hold it again. If you don't, just keep, keep holding without breathing in. I 
Okay, breathe in, huge breath in. Hold. Hold for 15 seconds now. Okay, now release and keep your eyes closed and just keep your hand on your heart. So now, just feel, feel what you feel. Feel how lovely the body feels, all that lovely blood moving around. You've just oxygenated yourself. So what I want you to think about now, think about somebody or something that you're extremely passionate about that means the world to you, your mother, your father, your partner, music, anything, nature, whatever it is, pick something that you absolutely love and adore. And think about that and feel it. Where do you feel it in your body? Have a feeling it's near where your hand is. So feel that. That's your heart space. That's the, the, the magic place where we, uh, where we forget to visit. <laughs> it's a very important place to tune into. So now keep your eyes closed. What I want you to do is I want you to think of the number two. Now I want you to think of adding the number five to that. Now I want you to think of adding five to that again. Now I want you to add two. And now divide that by two. Notice where, where the focus is now, how it's shifted. You're now in your brain. <laughs> and so this is where where uh, all of our critical thinking happens and where our, our egos kind of live, you know? But that was just a little, a little exercise. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you feel nice. Um, but uh, that is um, uh, very powerful stuff to do um, on a daily basis. Breath work, um, if you have a morning routine, I, I can't recommend it enough. I know I think maybe Diana's gonna talk about routines, so I won't do that. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's kind of that there. I could go on and on and on about, about this stuff, but uh, I won't. So in summary, be good to yourself. Try new things and have fun. Um, consume proper fuel, very important. Look after your gut. Um, move, baby. You know, get that body moving, get the juices flowing, get sweaty, uh, whatever it is, sex, have a load of sex. If you're not big into exercise, just sexercise yourself until you're sweating. And that's fantastic as well. <laughs> um, make your sleep a high priority. Very crucial. Really crucial. Um, it's very, 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 very important. Uh, and find ways to connect more with your heart space. Um, the, the creativity uh, and, and flow space, they cannot occur unless we are in a balanced energy space. It's really that simple, you know? Um, life will be a struggle unless we pay attention to these four things um, and, and give them what they need, you know? Um, so yeah, thank you for listening. It's actually a bit longer than I thought. Um, I hope it wasn't boring. Um, yeah, you can find me at the links here. Um, Please reach out to me if you have any questions or, you know, I'd be very happy to help you out. You know, that's why I'm here and um, I want to help you. So let me know what you need. Um, please follow us, feelsconspiracy.com and uh, subscribe to the mailing list on the website. If you do, there will be some, uh, some little surprises in there for you. Um, we have a, uh, a discount, received a discount from uh code from a, a gut testing company in Estonia. Um, so yeah, if you just subscribe to the mailing list, you will get that. Uh, and uh, keep an eye on the blog and the website. We'll do a follow up to this um, workshop and we, uh, we will put in like a whole bunch of links and books and forums and things that are uh, point you into the, the right direction for healing, you know. 
so yeah um that is me that's me done thanks very much and uh see you soon bye bye so diana you are up next You're muted, Diana, by the way. So, can you hear me now? Hello, everyone. My name is uh, Diana. Uh, welcome uh, to, yeah, mental health. Uh, my direction will be more of a music direction. Basically, I'm uh, coming from the music industry. It was super interesting for me to hear dance presentation. Um, I guess many things and topics um, are crossing over and um, sliding into each other. Um, why it became interesting to me and why I started um, yeah, reading myself into it and uh, then uh, finally doing my systemic NLP uh, course um, because I come from a background of uh, communications. I studied all the languages and it uh, really interested me how you can transform a speech and sentences and um, essentially your thoughts in your brain and uh, that uh, can basically hack your brain and also your code of, uh, for sure. So um, I was wondering uh, during my studies, um, I studied educational studies, uh, why would topic of um, artists, uh, especially for me in the electronic uh, music, um, was never discussed. The topic did not appear um, about mental health. Of course, there were some discussions about being stressed and on tour, but it's never appeared in the daily business. So um, that's why I initially did, did my systemic NLP practitioner and uh, started diving deep into the whole um, industry. So um, what I found out is um, how important uh, it is to find the connection to yourself and um, the real time for yourself. As um, Dan told us in a few examples, you can find various ways um, of how to get down. We did some exercise right before, which was amazing and I hope calmed you all a bit down. Um, and how uh, to disconnect basically from your daily work, from your daily routines, whatever keeps haunting you. So during my um, coachings um, as an artist coach and uh, also DJ uh, coach during talks with other artists and uh, people who are in the industry, um, I saw that there are some problems uh, that uh, surround the scene, which are basically being always reachable 24-7 um, on the run. Um, also the pressure to, to be on top and to be on time um, to succeed. Um, how do you divide the personal life from your artistic expression? as whoever you are, painter, artist, teacher, producer, as Dan here, um, or poet as uh, Daisy here. So um, yeah, fulfillment, also sleep deprivation, as we heard uh, from Jen, and super important topic um, on which I also could uh, talk for hours. Um, yeah, and all of that uh, leading to depression. So that's why um, this, um, theme and this um, area was so important to me. Um, we usually take everything, all the thoughts and all the problems that surround us the whole day during work and uh, during our um, artistic expression and also take them into our personal life, into our little shell that we are and they all are individuals and take things uh, differently. So um, what I try to um, do in my coachings is to see you personally as the expert in your life. Um, what does it mean for me? Um, 
we all um, have a certain small, maybe genetic information, but we are humans and we are made to learn, we are made to adapt to different situations. So um, you adapted to some methods, some uh, trainings that you did, um, some things that you just naturally do uh, because you saw some there an example or uh, you thought that this will be beneficial to you. Um, and we humans, we kind of stick to the things because it's comfortable and then our brain don't have, uh, don't has to um, work and burn energy and, and they have to eat and so on. But uh, we stay true to these methods and um, theory and methods that they really make up. Um, yeah, so telling you that uh, we are still made to change when we leave our little small um, comfort zone, the methods that they used to, uh, to do, the paths that they used to go, when they go outside of this box, um, a whole new world opens for you. And then you will find really the power, uh, the amazing power to basically achieve everything. As soon as you realize that you have a power within you to just step outside of your um, little paths, methods, whatever you call it, and um, to start slowly maybe questioning yourself, oh, is it really the way that I'm doing it? Is it really me? Maybe it's an example that I took from someone or um, there was a situation and I learned that behavior and kind of stuck to it. Is it still beneficial to me? This is a super important point and this demands me time. So as Dan um, told us before, um, what is me time? It's uh, finding your inner balance. You have different, all kind of various um, things that you can try out and be aware of um, that. You're all individuals, you're all different. Um, maybe for them it's meditation or martial arts before this worked. Um, maybe for me it's, I don't know, dancing and reading, for example. But for someone uh, else, it's um, diving into music, producing a new track, or going swimming, maybe meeting with friends. Um, find your me time. What is really um, the, the time, the time structure, also the whole system you're in that brings you down? As I told you, it can be reading, it can be sports. Um, and this is called the recovery competence, basically. Um, so in the zone activity, um, is not always easy um, to stick to. As Dan told before, remember, we all like to stay in kind of the comfort zone, but the magic, it happens outside in the world. So even if it might in the beginning feel a bit new and not really um, at first sight super comfortable for you, just stick to it and try it out. Uh, it can be really magical if you um, stick to things um, and just go through that kind of um, disturbance that you sometimes feel in yourself and just go through it. Um, you will um, see that you have an amazing power within yourself if you just step over that border and just go over it. So remember, this recovery competence, this uh, little space, uh, this little time that you give yourself, it should be only for you, only for yourself. Um, don't look at others and say, oh, here um, on social media, someone is doing this and that. You have to feel really good within yourself and um, let all the other stress go with of some of the exercises that Dan told you about or some of the examples that he told you. Um, this is a great help. One way of doing it is, um, this was like a personal um, changer for me because I'm um, sometimes a very chaotic person and I like new things right away. And 
I like very many things uh, and like to try it out, but I uh, usually find it hard to stick to it. So what I started doing is um, doing a daily journal, however you do it. You can write it manually, you can write it online um, using a Miro board or Trello or whatever fits you um, up to your choice. But uh, basically, what can you do? You expect your, um, you check your daily routines, your daily life, what you do from day to day. Um, how are your workflows? How can you, um, or when do you feel excited or anxious? When do you feel karma? And uh, what are you doing then? Maybe it is even like cooking for yourself and not ordering fast food uh, at home. Um, and then you get there and then you find your inner balance and you're in the zone and you're kind of oh, into it. And this is your me time. This is then you're in the balance with you. So write down your rituals, whatever fits you, um, and just test them. I uh, did, I wrote down some certain things that really interested me and there I felt, okay, this brings me down. And uh, what I stick to um, was for me personally was reading and really planning cooking ahead because I also like to buy eco-friendly stuff. I travel a lot. My body thanks me if I eat um, more of the, uh, yeah, more salads and fruits and uh, home cooked stuff. So for me, um, in the beginning, it was really hard because of all the stress and of all the, okay, I still have to do this and this work and this, and I have another meeting and this meeting. So, oh no, I cannot um, give myself the time to cook or even to let cooking, like, um, yeah, get a time away from my other works that I have to finish. So I basically I told myself, no, I'm not allowed to cook because it's stealing my time, which is crazy. Um, and then I really decided, okay, let's do it. Let's uh, just uh, make every day something funny, which I would eat um, and really try to stick to it every day, like a daily routine first few days it was horrible because it was like okay yeah okay now you have to get up and to prepare and first to chop everything and I think after the third fourth day I was so happy about it because it was like my me time and I um, could just be alone with my thoughts and really calm down um, while you're cutting your vegetables you can do meditation you can um let the body get oxygen so then you breathe in yourself this is also um, the part that you can combine um, and I really noticed how how much calmer I got and how much more value time it actually gave me um, besides of thinking the complete opposite before that it's like so time consuming and right now I really stick to it and it just balances my day really out so just try it out if it does not work with you for a longer period of time don't um, get stressed out or don't try to uh, to really be like hard on yourself, uh, like the military drilling kind of hard. No, if you feel that your body is not taking it in and you don't feel comfortable, just go to the next thing and retry until you are happy and until you find your inner balance. So this is one of the methods I can uh, give you that I uh, personally really like and also stick to it that I tell to my students and um, coaches. Um, yeah, that kind of helps you get through the daily life and find your small uh, pieces of time for yourself. Um, going to the next one. Yeah, super important message. I personally, um, this was like a game changer for me, kind of an eye opener. Um, I always said to myself, okay, if I invest time in myself, it's also maybe a waste of time because I, I mean, I don't work, I don't give like lessons, so I don't have my income or my like money coming in onto my bank account. So 
why is um, spending time on myself important? And then I kind of kept rethinking, uh, read a lot of uh, books, podcasts about um, yeah, yourself and what is value, basically. How do you define your own value? Um, what is value for yourself personally? Um, and um, if you decide to take the time into yourself, how is it going to benefit uh, yourself? So for me, I said, okay, look, good time. My thought is, okay, not beneficial. Maybe spending the time. Hmm, I don't know. Let's try it out. Um, let's get the thinking process further. So if I invest time myself and I'm calmer, for example, relaxed here, I have the right amount of sleep. It might be seven and a half hours. For me, it's definitely eight, um, not 10, just eight. So uh, this was my find, find out uh, moment. Um, I give better work and I'm better as a person because I can percept more, I can give people more and I can, um, I grow as a person from which um, everyone surrounding myself uh, benefits. So um, essentially spending time with myself and for myself is also beneficial for every kind of work that I do um, and for every new person and new student that I get to know um, because I'm investing in myself. So I'm investing in also all the other things that I do. Um, and this was like, yeah, like this lightning bulb popping up in my brain. I was like, oh, why didn't I recognize this like so much earlier in my life? This was, would have been like such a great uh, experience and I would have um, done more things slowlier for myself, not rushing through life uh, through this, uh, for example, business uh, mindset that you usually get taught in all of this business schools, like faster and better. And you have to be like multitasking every time. No, this is only stressful. Sometimes you can do multitasking. It's okay. Everything is okay in life if you do it in small portions and if you balance it out. Um, but do balance it out. It's not good to just run like a small um, hamster and um, try to uh, get on the train and uh, jump on things. Um, yeah, it just makes you unhappy. And remember the depressions that I talked about. So next slide. Um, one, um, yeah, also like a second trick that I always tell to my students and um, use myself a lot in many different things, also in my personal life, in my relationship, um, um, before starting something is the mirror trick. Um, and I can tell you, for me, it really works standing in front of the mirror, um, but you can just um, tell it to yourself without looking yourself in the eye directly. Um, sometimes it helps writing it down and uh, what is it about it's about your negative beliefs it's about your negative thoughts that occur daily in your brain in your thoughts that pop up immediately then you um, make certain things that you feel not happy about or um, you maybe want to change them but you're still on the way there and um then there are thoughts of, oh, maybe I'm not good enough. Um, I will never achieve this. Or, oh, I, I'm so poor and I will just stay poor. Like things like this that really brings you down, that have a super negative vibe to it and feelings. Um, just leave all the negative words out. Um, not good enough. Um, will not achieve something and change it into, as an example on my slide, um, from I'm not a good producer, I want to use my whole potential to become a good producer. Just repeat the words for yourself. The first sentence will definitely not leave a positive feeling after saying it out loud. The second one, will kind of give you the drive of 
okay, cool, I have a potential. Oh, great, I have a potential. I've never thought about this, but now I have a potential, cool. And then if I use it, I'm becoming a greater producer. What a great change. Instead of telling yourself every day, oh, I'm not a good producer. Try telling yourself, oh, I want to use my whole potential to become an awesome producer or a good producer, or an amazing producer, just as an example. I can tell you it will definitely change your perception towards yourself and also the per perception of uh, others, of yourself, because the energy that you spread uh, will differ. It's... Um, it's a ripple effect also. If you throw a stone into a um, in sea or water or something, you will see the circle spreading. So if you changing your attitude towards yourself and your negative thoughts into something positive, will um, it will lighten the room. It will spread like the water, like a ripple effect um, if the stone that you throw into the, the sea. So try it really at home. Um, we all have this uh, negative beliefs of us. And I'm pretty sure you, if you go deep in yourself and close your eyes and uh, remember what you keep telling yourself every day in a certain situation, you will find a few sentences that are not beneficial to yourself and um, just leave them out. It's not important. Um, just replace them with something really lovable for yourself because you are the greatest person for yourself. You live together with you every day. And uh, remember, if um, you don't love yourself, no one's going to love you because love yourself you're great um, whoever you are and this mirror trick helps a lot to um, defeat this negative thoughts and disbeliefs in yourself and just uh, make you make a happier approach to it and these small steps they really bring you further and um, make you um, go for a light a bit easier yeah so remember the mirror trick um, if you want before the mirror. Um, yeah, next one is, um, is one of the circles that I like to teach to my um, artists, DJs, and um, yeah, basically musicians that I work with. Um, but I also know many people uh, else who do it as uh, like leaders. Uh, for example, I have a circle of excellence of being a coach, for example, and just to explain it for uh, for you, um, my circle, as example, as a coach, um, is kind of different than my usual self. I really like to talk, and I really like to talk stories and to tell stories, and um, yeah, just to to express myself and. Uh, be loud but as a coach you can't be loud and you can't express yourself and you really have to listen to your coachy so what did I do I made a circle of excellence for me as a coach and what did I do so basically I remembered a place um, and a time in my in my mind there I went to where I had a perfect calm moment of being the perfect listener. Back then, it was a, a memory of me um, really being a good coach. And I remember that feeling, how it felt, imagine that. And I started training that. I started training that feeling. So I imagined everything. I used all my uh, five senses. Um, I remembered how it felt, if it was warm, the smell surrounding me. And every time I remember it, I step into my personal own circle of being a coach who is super quiet and listens to my coachy and just writes down the things because as I told you you are the experts and I just take the information from you and um, yeah help you find it uh, in yourself basically so I have to listen to you closely um, and to help that um, the circle of excellence really works great for me I was really struggling how I can find like my inner peace and being the perfect listener before. And it was really hard for me. And I was kind of like, okay, okay, don't talk. 
So they said, no, but I want to talk. Okay. Oh, no. And it was like an imbalance for me. And after doing this daily and just uh, training this calmness, whatever it is for you, I had um, students with fear of um, gigs, for example, or with people who are afraid to speak in front of others. And I had speakers um, that I worked with who were like, okay, I'm a speaker, but I'm afraid on stage. What do I do? And then they really step into the circle on stage and become the calm person as soon as they remember the surroundings, how we felt, how they tasted, how we felt inside. They bring themselves down into this different mindset and different state. And um, also sometimes for me as being an artist and uh, sometimes I'm anxious about new gigs and that are super important and uh, that I have to play. And then I'm like, I get in and now get into your circle of calmness um, or a different circle being a super cool artist um, and just do it and it helps a lot it um, just brings you again into a moment of um, being with yourself feeling yourself feeling the moment so remember the circle of uh, excellence um really use your thoughts, use your brain, manifest the situation, manifest all the feelings and step into for a circle. Yeah, I use a circle for it basically. So manifest it, write it down and important, repeat it really daily. Um, it has to manifest in your brain and then you will um, dive in way, way easier than you used before in, in the first time, for example. Um, it's just routine, building up routine, making for your brains new ways to cross and um, yeah, to go in different directions, also brightening your vision, which is super fun. Yeah, actually, this is kind of like the wrap up and the end of my um, small little, um, yeah, X course, I would say, um, for the last words, maybe a small reminder, think that uh, we are made to change, we are made to adapt, we only have like a small gene level that we're based on, but everything else is totally undefined, we learn so many things as a child, as a one-year-old, two-year-old, three-year-old, and we can all change it. It's super easy. Just believe in yourself and just stick to it. You're not alone out there. We all have the same struggles. I can tell you I've coached super big names, super small names, super big people, great, rich, poor. And basically everyone is struggling on the same things and um, searching deep within themselves. So um, yeah, you're not alone remember and uh, I'm very happy to be part of today and thank you all for listening and joining oh nice one Diana thanks thank Let's you enjoyed that yeah yeah the um the circle of excellence that's a good one yeah just um yeah just just feeling uh, using all your senses to generate you know an ideal scenario and kind of putting yourself in there it is a really powerful exercise it's a bit weird i've done it a few times it's really strange the first few times you do it isn't it like it's kind of what am i doing here i feel like a weirdo but then once you kind of feel it and do it for a couple of times it's, it's super uh, super powerful um so without further ado um let us introduce our guests. So we have um, Miriam Hakaya, who is in the bottom right of the YouTube. Um, and we have Daisy May in the bottom left. Hello, ladies. Thanks for joining us. Um, I think me and Diana have spoken quite a bit now at this point. Um, so we let you guys talk. So yeah, if you want to um, just give, give a little introduction about yourself and and you know what's important to you so miriam if you want to start make sure you unmute your your microphone 
Yes, do you hear me? Yeah, okay. So I'm Miriam and um, and I'm a um, psychologist and Ayurvedic practitioner based in Estonia. And um, uh, I just uh, loved your presentations, actually. Uh, I wouldn't have done it better than you, Dan. All this uh, was very Ayurvedic that you were speaking about. Really, yeah? <laughs> yes, yes, just beautiful. And um, I love that uh, that you had, uh, you used uh, sleep as the most solid block in your health uh, triangle. I certainly agree with that. Um, I feel that you, all, you also spoke about um, um, mental issues mental health issues. And I think I had just um, realized that um, sleep deprivation is uh, gives the uh, is the reason for negative thoughts actually to become to your mind and and also doubt. So this is very important if you have, if you realize if you recognize that you have um, Mm. And that you have bad thoughts, not negative thoughts about yourself and about what you do, have doubts, then you certainly need a good sleep. And in the morning, it will all, you know, look much better. Uh, maybe I will add one thing to this uh, uh, sleep, um, sleep uh, talk thing. Uh, you were you were saying that uh, seven to eight hours hours sleep is the healthy uh, healthy uh, amount of sleep. But I would uh, I would also say that uh, mm, the sleeping time is important as well. Uh, according to some research, uh, the most um, mm, healing, the most beneficial sleep is um, before. Two o'clock a.m. and according to Ayurveda, it's even earlier until twelve o'clock. So if you have if you have some chronic health issues or or maybe whatever mental issues, then uh, maybe it's just wise to to go to sleep a little bit earlier. Uh, yes. That is yes. sometimes quite hard as a DJ, you know. That's yes. why the for me, especially in the electronic music, and I have many, many, many artists that struggle to find the balance because you are on tour. If you travel all around Europe or even travel to USA or Australia, it's super bad with a jet lag. You sleep for three five hours when you go to the next hotel drive to the next um, plane and i mean before COVID, of course but it's picking up again and it's gonna um continue so for for me it's kind of how can you still find this peace and balance and uh, not have a negative thoughts. This is super important for every artist regardless in, in what direction yeah yeah. So, so um, yeah, uh, Daisy, do you want to introduce yourself maybe and tell us a little bit about yourself and what's important <laughs> to you? Yeah. Hello, humans. My name is Daisy. My pronouns are she, her, or they, them. And, um, well, I care a lot about the world I live in, myself, and also these human experiences in the sense of, I spend a lot of time and in my work as an artist and I guess as a human being that is alive and, and well, trying to understand what, how we can, what new skills or how can we create a better experience of being alive, especially during challenges and trauma and the integration of trauma. I spend a lot of time seeing how I can compost my traumas and bring that playfulness into really sort of challenging situations. Uh, and uh, 
Yeah, my work as an artist is a book I just published uh, last year for the first time. And I make immersive theater, some clowning, and a bit of workshop. But all I like working with the human heart and seeing how we can make a, this wholesome ecosystem inside uh, to relate better to the world and to others. So, yeah, that's a bit about uh, me. Thank you. Nice one. Um, I have another question for you, uh, Daisy. What, what is what does creative resilience mean to you? I know we spoke Thank a little you. bit. Um, and this is what I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> so I think resilience, if we see it as this muscle that we train in, I think we all have it and it's something that can be cultivated and even stretched and, and worked on. But for me, when I came up with creative resilience, it was like, taking resilience to the next level, using creativity and courage to be able to not just survive the situation and make more or less meaning from it in a way that is integrated, but use creativity to have more agency or a sense of agency as in feeling more in control of my inner world, feeling myself more capable, creative resilience. I think it allows us to build our identity and grow beyond the traumatic experience we are processing. And also bring other parts of our identity like creativity and resilience, usually they would not mix. But when we can bring those other parts of ourselves to, the, to help us in the traumatic situations and in the processing and in just being human, uh, I think it, be, it creates a way more qualitative experience for us as humans. Um, for me, I experienced it a lot uh, around maybe three years ago, I got diagnosed with a rare genetic disorder. And I had, and I was quite more or less all alone in the world facing this and I was really broke. I have a, a genetic disorder that I have tumors growing all around my body. And they're not always cancer, but sometimes they become. And I had just moved to Berlin I had just discovered I was an artist, so I was very fresh and very eager to live in this world and to, to enjoy and to be playful and be around. And then I got all this set of news and this process I had to do, like five MRIs in one month, uh, a lot of other studies, having to pay for all those things. And then eventually I thought I had cancer, but, so I had two biopsies. But when I was experiencing this, I was like, okay, how can I take it to the next level? How can I bring all this art? all this colorfulness that I'm experiencing outside this hospital room into it. Um, I didn't want like the, the hardship to take away my power of play because play makes me alive, playfulness, it makes me laugh. It makes me like think differently, relax, get on the flow, a bit of what you guys were talking about also. And that's why I think creative resilience is even essential, especially with the state of the world now and the challenges that we will face as a society. Uh, resilience is like doing it as a grown up, I think, in a way. The, but with creativity, you can be have space for your inner child. Um, yeah, that's a bit it, I think. I thought, yeah, cool stuff. Um, well, not not cool stuff that you're you're of your disorder, but how you. Uh, saw it as an opportunity to evolve and, you know, turned it on its head and made it into something positive. So go, go you. <laughs> well done. Um, something that I think will be not clear for a lot of people is what is Ayurveda? Um, so Miriam, can you tell us a little bit about Ayurveda and Ayurvedic practices and uh, specifically how did you get into it and, and how do you practice it? Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, um, Ayurveda is just a natural living, just uh, being happy, how to create happiness with, uh, with, uh, with the same thing that uh, Dan described uh, in his presentation. And I came to Ayurveda also because of, the, of my autoimmune um, health situation. Uh, around 14 years ago, uh, and my own, let's say, um, um, health uh, 
uh, disorder actually opened the opened the road to Ayurveda for me. So I just had to uh, follow them, uh, like uh, Hansel and Greta uh, had to pick up the breadcrumbs. So this was my just uh, um, how I how I knew how I got to know Ayurveda. And um, now I just, uh, I do, um, I teach pe people, patients with chronic illnesses or, or people who, who um, just can't take the, uh, the synthetic medicine because they just, uh, because of the um, side effects. So they want more natural, more natural treatment. And I also, I also organize um, Panchakarma retreat, retreats and Panchakarma is the most uh, profound uh, health uh, procedure in Ayurveda, which, is, which combines body cleanse and, and um, cleaning the mind or making the mind, let's say, introducing stillness in mind. I don't know if you, it's, it's very, you know, it's just, um, it's, uh, it's just the normal way of life, um, how, how the nature has, um, the na natural way, you know, just uh, the same things that you described, Dan, in your, in your um, presentation. Right. And this sounds really amazing. I'm, I mean, Paula told me like some little tiny things ab about it but it sounds kind of very very amazing to me um and very natural also yeah i just wanted to to say to you diana that um when you are struggling you know and the, the creative people are struggling with uh, with um let's say healthy routines you know it's uh it's just um, like a Pareto principle applies everywhere. That at least when you when you try to do your best, um, eighty or seventy percent uh, of the time, then your body can uh, can deal with uh, with uh, with flipping. You know these twenty thirty percent things. So this is uh, the, the um, black and white thinking is not um, healthy. Just the middle way thinking uh, is more loving to yourself. Balance. <laughs> Balance. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. That is super interesting. Yeah, I noticed that for myself because I was partying and living the artist's life a lot. <laughs> and I got older <laughs> and older. <laughs> And it got worse. Uh, and uh, yeah, finding all these balances and really how to compensate this parties and nights out and sleep deprivation. Uh, so for me, for me personally, I find out that, uh, of course, I can do it and I can do it to a certain amount if I live the 70, 80 or 90 percent of my other life um, accordingly to what is beneficial to myself and my mindset. Um, but that is a long journey. <laughs> yeah. And maybe there is a candy when you go to sleep early, as you will have the access mm -hmm. to the very creative time very early in the morning, which is amazing time, actually. Oh, candy is the best <laughs> idea ever. <laughs> I will try that. Nice one. Um, for you, Diana, um, uh, in your opinion, what, what has been the biggest resistance to change that you've noticed amongst artists? Um, which habits are, are the hardest ones to break? Oh, this is a hard one, actually, because there are so many different things um, happening, but... Um, so many different topics popping, popping up, but um, basically I would um, summarize it. It's, it's basically loving yourself and giving yourself the time because um, 
the biggest challenge that I get from my students and from my coaches is uh, the constant um, question mark. Am I good enough? Am I um, fast enough on time? Am I delivering um, good enough things? So they're always kind of jumping to new things and just moving, moving, moving and doing and doing and playing and playing. And from resulting from all this, you're completely forgetting yourself and you don't go back to these moments of really listening to your body and even recognizing is it a flu that I have is it just a simple nose running people don't even recognize this anymore they just go to the doctor and I'm just kind of sick or I feel bad or I feel depressed um, they don't even separate um, between their feelings that much because they're so overwhelmed at that hamster um, circle, hamsterrad is in German. Um, that's basically the self-love that I see as a main problem and that I try to teach them and say, hey, first you have to listen to yourself and really take the time for yourself and uh, see it as a value and see it as an investment into yourself so i would say this is the biggest topic um, self-love and really investing time into yourself and um, dealing with this and um, sometimes people come to me and they say oh but you're the coach you can't give me the perfect um yeah healing or the perfect sentence and then i would change and it will be done and then I talk to them and they, they realize they actually have to work on themselves. And it's, <laughs> it's a process. <laughs> and, it's it's work. Yeah. <laughs> and it's getting outside of this. I'm feeling so good and so lazy. And now I have to move out of this. It's like getting out of a warm uh, bed or like of a nice uh, bathtub or like eating something and not wanting to stop. It's like a similar feeling. You know, it's good. It might not be beneficial to you, but you don't want to stop because it's good. Um, so People also get, get stuck in uncomfort zones as well, right? Yes. Uh, yes. It's also another problem, you know, um, self-blaming and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, Daisy, uh, you, you've had phenomenal, um, you have phenomenal resilience, you know, and we spoke a bit last week, you know, your story was pretty pretty uh, mind-blowing you know um you know what 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 would be some of the key things that you kind of realized you know for anyone who's kind of self-loathing or, or blaming themselves you know or in this kind of spiral you know from, from your experiences thank you for the question so i think that First thing when you are when we are experiencing all this like self-loathing and then like just it's to compost, you know, we how we separate the trash. It's being able to sit, knowing you're gonna get dirty with yourself. We can always shower afterwards, but have the willingness to to sit and like first separate what is going on. Be able to see the parts you can recycle, then the parts that you can reuse just with a small wash, and which parts go to compost. So compost. So then they can be with some shit, with some greens. We let it be until it doesn't smell anymore and it can be fertilized. But also in resilience, I think there's a, a few keys. For me, the, the power of storytelling in the sense that inside ourselves, we have our own mythology and our own symbology in the sense of what makes meaning and where we are within our own story. And we are also the, the script writers of our lives. Yes, things happen, but we can get really the power and the agency to see like, okay, I decide the meaning that this will have to me. And I can also, from that, decide how I show up. So for me, that felt, for example, not putting the, the whole hospital situation as the bad people in the story, but being able to change the script from a, first from a place of gratitude in the sense of, for every doctor, every nurse, every MRI technician, they had studied a long time to be doctors and be where they are now. They also sacrificed a lot of things to be able to have the right tools with the right knowledge and the right experience to be able to help me. 
And behind them, I would always think there's a legacy of thousands of human beings that have the, you know, very, the same body functions as me and the same, but different desires and dedicated their lives to help others. So already that sort of situation with the, like hospitals and studies and all those interactions, I could, when changing the story, I could open things for, to connect, to connect. I think looking for ways to find connections through changing the story and the narratives, it's, it's a hinge, like the, it allows the windows to open. Uh, yeah. And also something that was super important and that saved me in a way, I think was a, that I made a non-negotiable that playtime and like my art, which is my medium of expression, uh, were never taken away. I went dressed up as a witch to the German doctors I had named one of the tumors Dark Bather because they had gone to the dark side. And every week I would take myself two hours for like a daisy date that then I found out their colartist way uh, through a book. And I would just spend time with myself and whatever happened, being able to meet myself outside the current situation that was drowning me or teaching me how to swim uh, was essential. It reminds me that I'm more than the pain I'm experiencing. It reminds me that I'm powerful and that there's beauty and life and a different air to breathe. Um, yeah, and not losing the sense of humor. I think uh, maybe you need a spleef, maybe you need breath work, but like, um, don't lose the, the sense of humor because that's also, laughing is nice. Well, yeah. accepting the situation, right? But um, yeah. Yeah, so they, like some things, like if you don't laugh, you'll cry. You know what I mean? And laughing's better. So do the yeah. laughing. <laughs> and cry and laugh, but like surrendering, I think, is being able to accept whatever is in here in our chest with our emotions and making a very delicious fruit salad with it and making the best of what we can. Um, life is going to happen anyway. We might as well make it something beautiful that can nurture yeah. us and enable us. Mm -hmm. You uh, you mentioned your book there. Like, tell tell us a bit how how did you end up deciding to write a book, and you know what what inspired that, and how was the journey like? And congratulations, by the way. Thank you. Um, so I started right. I I was raised in a super traumatic house. I think I would have gotten like a bingo of abuses more or less. So I escaped when I was uh, around twenty one. First, I actually tried to become a nun in the Christian church. So be able to get out of my house, then that didn't work out. And I sort of left very raw and very, very, yeah, very small, very young and very naive and very hurt into the world. And I sort of had to learn how to raise myself again. And at the same time, be raised by the world and all these exposures that I was, or all these things that I was being exposed to. And I started writing poems that would anchor me. I used to pray to Jesus before and I missed the prayer. So I just decided to make my own prayers. And those poems started accumulating. When I was afraid, I had this poem about going to the sea and this unknown that I would repeat to myself. When I was feeling anxious or scared, I would repeat these other poems. And I started creating my own mantras. Um, I started collecting them for like around maybe three or four years and different love letters. I had no one to write love letters to because my family was sort of out of the picture. So I started writing love letters to myself because I, had, I needed someone to be able to know what was going on. Uh, and there was a point where I was in Australia, I had gotten $10,000 stolen and then my backpack and it was this whole adventure. But I, there was an open mic and a friend told me, well, you lost everything you might as well go and share your poetry because the poetry book was one of the few things they hadn't stolen. And I shared it with the audience. It was my first time. I was on a very vulnerable uh, point in my life, but it was, um, there was a lot of resonance with the poems I shared. And then I saw the beauty in being able to connect through the poetry and this intimacy that I had been experiencing with myself was also reflected in the universal stories that us as humans experience in a point or another. Um, and then I got to Berlin. I, I thought I was an artist, or, or I realized I was an artist. And I tried to launch the book. And the first time it did not work. I made a crowdfunding and we went halfway. So I had to try again. And uh, the, 
all my friends and different people that had been touched by my story that uh, or my performances and just live showed up and uh, supported the campaign. So Wild Child of the Universe uh, could be born. It took a village and a community to make this book come alive and all these mantras. But uh, yeah, it, it's a journey of at least how my soul experienced a few transformations through Adventure Call, The Trials, Cosmos, Love and Surrender. Um, so yeah, it's a book full of poetry and the love letters, the, the windows of my heart and how I was shaped by the different humans and how I could learn to love and love healthily. I call my, my country of birth trauma land or compost land on a good day. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, I feel really grateful that in my life now I'm able to, to love and have seen how different people love, how different people cry, how different people experience life. And uh, yeah, so the poem was a uh, going and not like a sort of, I don't know, commemorum to my inner child that I could save uh, save and re-raise with better values than what had been given. Powerful self-healing right there. Uh, thanks for sharing your, your stories. Really, really uh, inspiring. Yeah, nice one. Um, let's look at, I have some questions here. Let's, let me have a look for a second. Um, Miriam. I think we'll ask you a question now. Um, yeah, so how would you describe the relationship between the body and the mind? Would you say that the body controls the mind or that the mind controls the body? And where do the boundary between the two begin and end? Yes. Simple this question. Is, <laughs> this, is a, this is a very, um, very good question and not a simple one, actually. Um, I used to believe that uh, that the mind is uh, the mightiest, you know, that whatever you decide with your mind, everything, you know, will turn out like that. Uh, but actually, uh, this is true, by the way, but you have to have a very uh, advanced mind, so to say. <laughs> So the easier way is to re rely on your body because uh, body is the physical physical mm, uh, vessel for the mind. And when you stabilize stabilize your body, your mind will be stabilized. So the the main problem with mind and body. Uh, they are very intertwined, yes. The main problem is that uh, body needs uh, a very strict routine, actually. Body wants everything all the time, all the same. The routine, basically. But mind wants uh, novelty, you know, the new things. Uh, and mind easily just gets tired and, and turns to the... Uh, well, well, to the direction where, where the stimuli stimuli come you know where there is dopamine <laughs> yes more you know light or more loud uh, um, sound so this is just a, um, a mind's way uh, to be very alert you know and this uh, uh, this uh, you know that where your attention goes, your prana goes. Your uh, prana is the life force, actually. And, and body works very hard every day to keep the stability, to keep the prana, uh, the stamina within your body. And then when, uh, when uh, the stimuli comes from somewhere, you know, when the mind goes away from the body, then body gets anxious, you know. The body gets, um, loses the, uh, yeah, the, the, the strength or, yeah, the, the, gets anxious basically. So our work, you know, 
to uh, to keep the good health or to build a good health is is to stabilize the body and to stabilize the mind to keep the body the routine and to keep the mind the peace so this is the key to the good health basically happiness and and uh, uh, let's say creativity that uh, creating love and creativity that makes the world a better place for everyone you know because creativity i think that creativity can also be like excrements you know that just just you get everything bad out of you but i would say that this uh, divine creativity is something that makes the world better and everybody more peaceful and calm and happy i don't know if i answered your question no you did yeah, okay. yeah that's one. very good <laughs> excrement for creativity that was that was a funny one <laughs> um uh, diana question for you the s systemic part of of like nlp systemic nlp mm -hmm. what, what exactly does that mean and what's the difference between that and nlp and maybe just tell so, people that, how, yeah. how, would, how would they learn more about because personally i've done nlp and eft when I was in my twenties in Thailand, and literally changed patterns I had for my whole life up to that point within three days, it changed me. You know, so it's 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 amazingly powerful stuff. But it seems to be uh, hidden away a little bit. You know, it's rare that I would get somebody coming to me and saying, "Oh, I was doing NLP." You know what I mean? But they would usually say, "I've been to a therapist." But um, the, the, I think the you know the reprogramming and the subconscious part of that. Is, is really powerful and maybe not in the spotlight enough, you know? Yeah, this is a huge topic. I could uh, also talk a bit longer for it. I will explain what systemic and NLP means in the beginning. NLP is neuro linguistic programming. So basically programming of your language and your speech, your speaking, but also your thinking of yourself. Um, and systemic means that you um, don't see yourself as in a closed room, as an individual, not touching anything else if you change yourself. But systemic means that you see yourself within a system that um, you can influence. So as I described to you, the ripple effect um, it's basically meaning the same as if you change yourself and if you throw that stone into the water, um, the change of your actions at your thoughts um, that you just give a different vibe into the world out will definitely affect the people surrounding you. Wow. So for you, basically, if you live together with Paula and you decide to make small naps for hours, a four hours, this will definitely affect her in her daily life. Or for you, Daisy, if you decide, I don't know, from now on not being such a happy, very vivid and super beautiful person that, that I got to see like in the last few hours here, minutes, this will definitely change your uh, crowd and the people supporting you because you will pull a different energy of people. And um, I, I'm Russian. In Russian, you have a saying, what you shout into the, um, into the trees, into the wood, uh, or into the woods will come back to you. It's the I like echo. Hmm? I like that yeah um so this so what you give out and what vibes you're giving out of you that's what you can get back and you can get different things out by speaking by thinking that's what i was um telling you with one of my exercises um starting with yourself but also starting with how you communicate with others and how you phrase your wordings do you um speak more positively more negatively um, how do you give feedbacks to others? Um, and these small changes, it can be a tiny little thing that you rephrase in your life that can have such a huge impact on you and also on your surroundings. 
that I hear out from Dan happened to you too. Um, so very interesting things can come out uh, of it. And it really depends on you as a person, what kind of focus you want to um, uh, get it on which uh, area of your life, your language, your behavings, um, as also Miriam told, we usually we just behave and uh, our body reacts, our mind thinks sometimes in different ways. Um, and then we try to connect the things uh, and relearn to do it. Uh, as I guess in the century, we kind of unlearned it from all the communications and being in big cities and stuff away from nature um but that's what you try to do you basically reconnect with yourself and think of your own structures how you speak to yourself to others how you think to yourself and talk uh, to you um, to your soul basically or to your inner light or whatever you see in there um you can really influence it and this is like such an important power also as daisy explained us her um just changing the mindset and her friend telling her a different view and a different mindset by just rephrasing basically the words that she, that she used no i'm all broke and i cannot do anything he says yeah but now you don't have anything to lose so he just turned it up this has such an impact and such a power so this is like the perfect exercise um, from daisy where you can see it in the daily life how much it can change um, your path and your direction in, in what you go to and it will also attract the people that will follow you on the road and that will um, continue to push in that direction if you just there to make this little step and just open your eyes like a tiny bit wider and uh, not in our shells which I also use uh, do a lot and uh, especially in our personal life uh, it's always hard to change yourself and sometimes you get back to it and then you're like oh no why why again oh. and then you just try it out again and again and um, at a certain point then you're like oh why was I even doing this like different before? It didn't make any sense. Why didn't I change it earlier? Like, okay, yeah. So that's on the question. I hope I uh, could cover it. Yeah, yeah, it was nice. Thanks for sharing. Um, one thing that was a bit unclear to me, uh, and maybe I'm going to do one soon, so I'm keen to know as well as the, uh, the point of karma, like what, what's the specific process there, Miriam? Like what? So I show up, and what happens? Yes, this is um, Panchakarma is very uh, uh, much, you know, this uh, experiential process. You have to experience it. It's very difficult to describe it with words. As something uh, is not describable, you know, just your experiences. The thing is that uh, when you cleanse your body uh, and when you teach your body routines and you clean it, you cleanse your body, you know, in a loving, uh, slow uh, way and you are not deprived, you don't feel the de deprivation, deprivation of anything, then actually love happens. You just feel this... Uh, uh, meditation in your mind that everything becomes still and um, you're just filled with uh, gratitude and love to just the fact that you are, you are alive. This is what happens there after the cleanse. The cleanse itself is very, uh, it's very uh, gentle, I would say, but very deep. Uh, it's uh, we use uh, we use uh, ghee uh, to uh, to soften the body inside and outside, and this ghee makes the uh, mm, uh, the, the processes in the body very slow. And actually, you you softly uh, um, sort of um, 
drop through your own patterns, your own behavior, behavior patterns and the patterns of thought. So this is very, this is how I can explain it. I don't know if it makes any sense when you just, uh, maybe Paula can, um, can uh, say what, what her experiences have been, so. But yeah, yeah, yeah. You're basically just, just do it, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to feel is to know, as they say, you know. Um, yes, exactly. I know, yes. Uh, I know like um, my experiences with plant medicines, um, it, I'll, I'll use the, the most uh, profound experience I had, which was in the Amazon uh, with ayahuasca and huachuma. Uh, like, you know, people told me stuff about it and, you know, I read loads about it and watched videos and like none of that came close to what you feel when when you're there and like everything is vibrating and, you know, there's things scanning your body and stuff. It's, yeah, no amount of reading or anything can can explain that. You just got to feel it, you know. Yeah, yeah. But it's a, it's a, in a way it's similar, but, uh, but uh... Mm, mm, let's yeah, say Sancho sure. <laughs> Burma is really subtle yeah. but when you go to Ayahuasca ceremony it's really yes <laughs> yes yes but uh, Ayurvedic things are all really subtle if you yeah. don't do it you maybe not experience anything you know yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah but it changes the behavior and mind patterns yeah, yeah that's important Let's see here now, questions. Do we have any questions online? Yeah, I'll do a round of comments and questions. Yeah? Oh, it looks like we have some questions from the listeners or the viewers. Yeah, so I'm going to mute myself and then Paul is going to ask the question. Um, hi, everyone. Paula here. I have been uh, chatting with you on YouTube and um, collecting your questions and comments. And thanks a lot for everyone joining. First, um, I would like to throw out some comments and see if we have any responses to those comments from our panelists. Um, first comment I'd like to bring out was from uh, Nora Flora. Um, she said that, or they said, excuse me, I uh, can't do assumptions, um, but uh, they said that Daisy brings rainbows into the world and even uh, in difficult situations and uh, they've seen it. So I just wanted to bring this to Daisy um, <laughs> as a little uh, flowers to you today. <laughs> um, so that was what I started off with. Now the second comment I have here is that um, also from uh, Nora Flora uh, saying that she would also add um, connection as a fifth category to what then you were talking about in the pyramid of uh, importances of things. So connection to uh, others and um, nature specifically, because uh, what you talked about would bring connection to self. So all these holistic practices bring connection to ourselves. Um, but do you perhaps have something to comment on how to deepen your connection to others and to the nature perhaps, Dan? Yeah, um, you need to mute. Yeah, I mean, how to deepen your connection to others and to nature. Uh, pretty straightforward from from my point of view go into nature with someone <laughs> not to sound like a smart arse but um i think that is a that is the easiest way you know um i totally agree uh, it's definitely in that list uh, of holistic things that's very critical you know for for well-being you know i've really noticed uh, the last year say I, i've spent way more time inside than I've ever spent before, you know, and you kind of get used to it. And, uh, you know, I, was, I went through a little phase of insomnia there at the end of the year, and I was like, what's going on, you know? And, uh, and I was like zooming out a bit and trying to think, and, and, and I was like, you haven't been going out into nature really much at all. Uh, 
Daniel Son. So, uh, yeah, it, it's really, uh, really important to get out there, you know, um, cold, go for some cold dips, you know. Um, another another thing I love to do um, is is take some psilocybin and, and go out in, in, into nature. You know, this is next level for connecting, you know, it just instantly raises your frequency and, I don't know, tunes you into to, to mother nature, you know, so um, I know that's not everyone's cup of tea and it's definitely not necessary to connect with nature, but uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing, you know, and, and if you have someone there to share it with, you know, even more so. Um, so, yeah, just, just, just get out, get out into it. And um, uh, in terms of um, connecting with someone, something as well that I've only really started to do in the last year is you know really just long maintain uh stare just stare into somebody's eyes you know for an extended period of time you know and just really just stare into each other don't say anything you know uh this is really really crazy if you do it for a while like you start to feel this just mad mad connection you know so uh that's that's definitely something you can do as well or just do stuff together that you both love, you know, I know when you're with your partner all the time or whatever, you know, you kind of, you start to do your own things and, and you kind of have to remember, like, do the things that you both love and do them together, you know, and that's, that'll bring you together, I suppose, you know, so yeah, that's my two cents there. Maybe I can add something about a connection to others, what I find uh, helpful um, for myself is, um, deep listening basically and uh, trying to um, rephrase the um, that um, yeah of a person just rephrase it and um, make a person feel comfortable and heard and this gives it gives you such a deep connection to to a person because then you also observe a person differently and um you look at them in a different light and um, just pay more attention and go deeply into it. So this helped me personally a lot to deepen relationships and um, not to be so fast and uh, jumpy, but to really feel the person and how um, he or she is inside. Um, and maybe on nature, I started having worms and centipedes in all my plants. This is my nature connection. <laughs> This might sound crazy, but I love worms. I was afraid of centipedes. Now I'm not afraid anymore. I still feel not comfortable with them, but at least I managed to overcome my kind of fear of them. So I feed them with leftovers from my food, which is super environmental friendly. And my worms get like, you have a rest of my potatoes and salads and stuff. So Maybe this brings the nature into your flat even or house. So, yeah. It's Storm, hey, worms. What about uh, you ladies, uh, Miriam or, or Daisy? Do you have anything there? Any wisdom for us? Yes. Yeah. I had experience that um, when you do the body cleanse and you take good care of your body, you, you love your uh, vessel of the, of the spirit, then um, connection happens naturally. Spirituality happens naturally because it's all built in a human person. So basically it's, uh, it's very uh, relieving to, to think that you don't have to do, uh, you know, big things or anything much just to take care of your body, basically, and um, keep the mind, train the mind to be still, and then everything happens. You can just, uh, you get all the uh, uh, wisdom of the world, so to say, all the divine wisdom, wisdom. you just get it because your channel is clean, basically. You are able to receive it. 
nice. And then, you, and then you feel that everything is one, actually, that you are one with everything, everyone and everything. The hippies were right. <laughs> <laughs> Daisy, you have anything to add? Do you want to do you want to share anything or with well with connection, especially to others, but also in relation to oneself? There's a quote. I even put it in the beginning of my book because it shaped me that much. It says, "I am a human being, therefore nothing human can be alien to me." And it was written by Terence, who was a Roman slave about two thousand years ago. Uh, but from that's a place where I like to that I show up or where I, my heart is open when I connect to others and the world and nature uh, in the sense that uh, beyond the social construction of, of gender and the life circumstances that shape us, uh, there's a, we come from the same birth that birthed us. Uh, uh, yeah, I think that it's important to be humble in our humanness and when and from that uh, humbleness is where we can, and authenticity to the humbleness, I think it's when the most nourishing connections come. Um, because it's without expecting much. And it's about receiving and being able to make a symbiosis with the roots of the other person. Uh, yeah, and with nature, well, I'm very lucky now because I left Berlin and moved to Tenerife in a spontaneous adventure. Um, so here it is more accessible. Um, yeah, to have it integrated on my life. But yeah. Nice one. Thank you for sharing, ladies. Um, Paula, do we have any more questions from the viewers? Um, uh, yes, we have. Uh, I have actually four more questions for you. So, so you know. <laughs> First is related to another comment by Sahil, who said that he would like to add that in the pursuit of achieving goals, we should enjoy the journey because that's what makes the best memories in life. And therefore, I would like to ask on an open round question, what is your take on the pursuit of goals in our modern society? And because it seems that everyone wants to be someone, everyone wants to achieve something. There's a lot of things that we want to do and this is why we want to be happy is to achieve our goals. But um, yeah, so what, what is your take on this obsession of um, achieving and being successful um, in our current um, modern world? Um, yeah, I can start there. Um, yeah, it, it is very true. Um, I, I've speaking for me personally, like I think the reason why I set goals and uh, it's kind of, I feel like if you don't have some sort of a signpost, you just kind of end up going la, 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 and you just don't know what you're doing and your mind and your heart kind of start to go a bit mental basically like this is me speaking personally that maybe this doesn't apply to everybody but um i definitely think it's important to have goals but yeah as he said as you said what's what's sahil, as sahil says like it's it is very important to enjoy the journey you know um, but I think there's definitely like, a, yeah, this mentality of more, I have to do more and, you know, ultimately just get to the end point, you know, uh, fuck everything else in between is, that's really bad, you know, but it, it does seem to be very prevalent at the moment with, with people, you know, um, so yeah, uh, enjoy the journey, uh, bingo, you're on the money, man, that's me. Next. Ladies, anyone want to talk about that? I think, at least for me, goals, I like to, I'm a dreamer and I like to see what happens if it works. So for me, it's either an experiment to see how, like, when I put a goal, 
of course I want to achieve the goal, but it's more like, could I do the exercise of becoming like the exercise of trying to achieve the goal is what is more important for me. It's like how we walk the walk towards our goal. Um, like for example, when I first had my first book experience that I made this girl fund me, uh, I did not reach the goal and I lost all the money that I had uh, raised. And it was really disappointing because of course I really wanted the book and I had all these like super goal ideas. But then when I sat down with it and I started deconstructing it, I saw that until like all what I had learned until then or with that experience helped me a lot for the second round. And it was not so much the goal, but the person I became in that in between, the things I learned about myself, the situations that I put myself in that allowed me to, yeah, to be shaped by my goals. I think it's important to set goals that can shape you in a really good way and that the experience of achieving it can be nourishing. Uh, and also don't take them so seriously, like seriously enough, but don't be too like, it's important to have compassion when we don't get them right away. Awesome. Love that. Nice one, Daisy. I think that the goals are good. You know, everybody has goals, but uh, but this um, controlling how you you reach to your goals is sometimes uh, a trap. So have the goal and then shoot the arrow and let, let the divine do the the find the ways how 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 you reach your goal actually so this is the uh, the divine balance i would say everybody has a life goal everybody comes to this world with this special special goal you know but uh, then trying to control everything exactly how you how you get to the goal uh, doesn't let the leave the you know divine uh, uh, the space for divine for miracles to happen totally yeah, and, you... and we a little bit we live in this uh, performance oriented uh, area but but this is but this is changing i feel yeah i think like for me uh, maybe the last the last year more than ever i've noticed synchronicity examples of it you know what i mean and it's like when you tune in or tune out whatever way you want to look at that it, it starts to present itself then you know and if you're really hyper focused on this thing here then you just miss all of these other beautiful things along the way you know <laughs> beautifully put together I, i've wanted to say the same as miriam and i think you it's so easy to lose yourself on the way if you are so strict within yourself and what a beautiful comment from sohail so sahil sorry i didn't get the name sahil, yeah. sahil okay this is like because this is this is amazing take the journey and enjoy the journey and, and as you said you notice then you're in the zone then you follow the goal anyway because it's there and you know it but you have like the space to see all the beautiful things and uh, people that pass you and that might also be leading in a similar direction and that can take you also um, on a small tiny road like with them and carry you along and then they jump off again but you're like a tiny bit nearer towards your goal and this is um, so magical this then this happens and then you find this um, sidekicks and side information and beautiful things happening to you but you really have to let it go a bit um yeah, and find the beauty in the journey itself and in the learning process itself. And I think this is, um, if you get that, then it becomes a very beautiful way. Yeah, totally. Um, we have another question, Paula, yeah? I'm gonna mute myself, yeah? So next question I have, is uh, from easy i'm sorry his names can be very exotic for my tongue however 
Um, the question is uh, how to track your sleeping cycles and what methods and techniques can be used to track your sleeping cycles and how to wake up in the ideal time period. So, um, yeah, for anyone who has anything to say about that. Yeah, um, I can talk about that. Um, yeah, thanks for the question. So there's lots of different ways you can, you know, technically track it. Um, there's different applications. There's one just called Sleep. If you have an Android phone, it's called Sleep for Android. Um, that basically uses the accelerometer, the thing in your phone when you move that it detects. And you can leave the phone on your bed and turn off your, you know, data stuff so you're not getting brain zapped. But you leave it on, on your bed and, and that will detect when you're shuffling, if you're, you know, making noise and stuff. And they can kind of gather some metrics about, you know, the stages of sleep you're in. Because when you're in REM sleep, your brain basically releases, uh, like it paralyzes your whole body, completely shuts down your whole, all of your muscles. Uh, and so you just don't move. Um, so it's able to tell from that like where where you are kind of thing but um generally if you know if you're, if you're in a healthy a sleeping pattern uh let's say you kind of fall asleep around the same amount of time it takes right from the time you kind of go right lights out it's usually about 15 minutes or something or give or take you know so you can even with that just ballpark figure it you know it doesn't need to be really really precise uh, and then just time 90 minutes cycles you know um and then yeah just just play around with with getting up uh you know after x amount of cycles and, and even try getting up in the bang in the middle of a cycle with an alarm and start your day that way versus doing it at the end of cycles and check out the difference it's really it's really crazy you know did you ever have to get a plane somewhere and you have to get one of those really horrible flights where you have to get up at shit o'clock and you end up just getting like three hours of sleep, but you like wake up and you're kind of like, why do I feel pretty okay? You know what I mean? And and yeah, that that, that was kind of that's always interesting for me, you know. And that kind of spurred me to look into it a bit more. But yeah, I hope um, I hope that answers your questions. There's plenty of ways to track um, sleep for Android, the good app, um, or you could get one of those things that sits on your wrist, um, a Fitbit, I think they're called. They have all sorts of cool. Uh, cool devices out there now. I think I'm the only one that's doing sleep hacking, am I? <laughs> so maybe we can uh, get another question there, Pow Pow. So I have a um, question also about sleep, but I'm gonna ask this for Miriam this time. So earlier we were talking about skipping sleep as a DJ and artist. So from an Ayurvedic perspective, can we compensate to um, compensate our skipped sleep pattern by eating regularly, for example, or eating uh, healthy? Or how can someone compensate um, to miss sleep? because that is a big part for artists in order to, so that miss sleep can be the 20% of the bad stuff. So, but what's important to compensate for that, to stay healthy? Yes, you are quite right. Um, have the structure uh, in your life otherwise, you know, just uh, eat well at the right times and try to sleep, uh, uh, go to bed early when you, don't have a night out, whatever. Just uh, at least one day a week or maybe two days a week or however it, it's, uh, it's okay for you. When you don't work, then go to bed early, have a rest. And also very good thing is to learn to meditate, to have little, you know, meditations during the daytime or the day nap as Dan was speaking about. So this is all the ways that you can compensate for sleep deprivation.
Um, what's your sound now? Oh, sorry. sorry. That's what I was saying. Um, but doesn't this mean that you uh, are actually creating less routine? So wouldn't your the logic of Ayurveda say that, okay, if you are every week, Friday, Saturday, you have to shift your life to a night shift, wouldn't it then be healthier to keep the nighttime routine? Because it becomes a routine then, and then going to sleep earlier and other times of the week break that routine. What's your what's your opinion on that? This is something that your mind tells you. So I, I would say just try it, try it out, and you will be you will feel better. Just try it out. I can say it definitely works. <laughs> it also works. Uh, um giving yourself a time to nap and uh, I saw a few documentaries because it's very interesting for me because I hate to nap and I have a personal discomfort to nap because I did not like it in kindergarten so I will not do it um, but after I've watched a few of documentaries and tried it out myself um, it really helps you so basically um, Sometimes we lie down and we fall into this short sleep. Um, sorry if I don't get all the perfect uh, pronunciations right for your REM or how properly it's called, but you can definitely jump into this like um, fast sleep that you can um, be up to for like max an hour. And sometimes you personally don't even have the feeling as if you could sleep or sometimes, oh, you know, I was just lying around there and could not sleep. But actually your body and your brain um, goes to sleep and relaxes. And um, I've tried it out myself and I was like, to my, to my partner, I was like, no, I could not sleep. And he was like, yeah, but I went inside and you were sleeping. Obviously, I can make a photo or you can. And then I filmed myself and I was amazed that I actually fell asleep, although I did not feel like it. And my brain told me something completely different. Um, and after making this um, yeah, example on my own and trying it out, I had to admit that naps are super important and it's so helpful for you as an artist because you get this kind of calmness calmness and balance um, and you feel way refreshed uh, way more refreshed after it and um, this is amazing how it worked but I was a non-believer like total non-believer before and I was always trying not to do it and go as late to bed as possible sleep as long as possible for super long hours um, because it's a DJ live set and I like that you're play late that's what you kind of start doing um and during the week when I um, tried also changing my routine to going to sleep earlier um I tried to go between between 12 and 1 this works for me personally I know that from many people it might be a bit too late but this is my perfect time during the week when I don't have like my late nine gigs it's a perfect time frame for me personally. Um, and then I set it to 7.45, eight hours. This is the perfect amount of my sleep time. But this was also like long learning, listening to my body and just getting to know it and also trying it out myself. Yeah, nice one. Uh, there's a book, I posted it in the YouTube there. It's um, by a guy, Matthew Walker. It's called Why We Sleep Well will blow your mind um have a read it's very interesting uh very relatable for everybody you know but um you can get it as an audio book or whatever stick it on in your car it's super nice um paul is telling me we've another question i'm going to mute myself to not get feedback again <laughs> um right we have reached our last question since we are quite over time and have to wrap up um, so I had a comment and a question from Berlin TV uh, saying that even with all the knowledge um, that we've just spoken about here today, he 
barely uses the knowledge and he should definitely integrate the self-healing techniques within his daily cycle. Do you think that cannabis could harm or influence that? And I think that's a really important question to a lot of artists and our listeners. So I would like to ask this from everyone. What is your take of uh, cannabis as an artist and in your daily lives? Um, I would like to go first. So for me, um, I personally um, use cannabis, but for me, I had to find out that um, it's, it's just um, enhances your state of being. So if you're in a depressive state of mind, it will pull you further into the state of mind. If you're in a happy state of mind, it will push you further in this state of mind. And um, that's what I learned. So if I'm not clear with myself on my own um, without any drugs and um, or medicine or stuff, then it makes no sense for me to uh, take other drugs or things to try out. Um, but this was a self-learning process. Before that, I was also trying to make things go away, um, maybe with smoking a joint or trying out CBD and stuff. And it was like, it was just basically dimming everything and uh, make it actually harder to find to my inner personal self because you're so clouded um, in your thoughts also and in your behavior that for me personally, it was like, okay, you have to sort the shit out with yourself and then you can try out everything. Um, whatever is to your liking, then you can move on and uh, maybe test what brings you um, and enhances you in a good way. Um, but cannabis was definitely in a bad state of mind I would never advise to use it but this is my personal opinion oh. yeah I am um, I can speak a bit about that as well yeah when I was when I was younger I was a very heavy stoner you know and uh, yeah for quite a while you know and it was really just screwing me up and um it's kind of like it kind of raises your sensitivity, but numbs you at the same time. So you're like really sensitive to everything, but you're like, oh, everything's fine, you know, but things are still going into the sponge, you know what I mean? You're just like almost ignorant to them. But now in saying that, this is if you're an everyday kind of stoner, you know, I, I, I really don't see any problems at all with someone smoking a joint here and there and, and having a laugh and a giggle or whatever, you know what I mean? That's totally fine. But I think same with anything really, you know, if it gets to the point where you're just doing it all the time, it could be anything, anything at all. It just becomes bad. Too much of anything good becomes bad. You know what I mean? So that's my two cents there. Daisy, do you have anything to share? I think so with weed, I've gone on faces where I was smoking a lot. Sometimes there were eras in Berlin where I had so much work and I have body pain also. So I would smoke maybe one gram a day and then a lot of coffee. Then I would quit for a while. Um, now I'm quite healthy. I haven't smoked so much in the last month since I left Berlin, actually. And for me, like a joint is like a walking stick, you know, sometimes you need a walking stick when the knees are not working so well until they recover and become stronger. Other times you find a, a big stick in the forest and it's fun to carry around because it brings adventure and whatever. As long as we don't become super dependent on them, on it. And I'm talking as someone who smoked a lot and now just stopped and was able to still be connected to my creativities as long as it doesn't become a non-negotiable. But at the same time, I don't know, people have their bodies and they know what's best for them. Uh, so I think they should always do whatever they they want. I think it's finding what works for the each one's own alchemy and each one's own ecosystem. But uh, yeah, now I took like a three month break and it was it helped a lot. I was so I felt really grateful. I felt very fresh. So it's nice to also experience. I think oneself, one is a heavy smoker outside of it and make it like also important. You know, if you're a stoner, hakuna matata, but also make time to not smoke for a bit 
yeah I suppose like the, the long and the short of it is if anything any substance that you're playing around with is stopping you from doing the things you want to do or being the person you want to be then you need to go what am I doing here that's kind of the easiest way I suppose that's the way I think about it you know if it's ever blocking me then get rid of it <laughs> Miriam do you want to share anything yeah, yes, I just echo to you that um, overdoing anything can can do your harm, actually. So that's it. Be sensible with everything. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. As my, my dad used to say, he liked to he liked to drink, shall we say, excess in moderation. <laughs> my cool. grandpa cool. likes to say that too. Oh, <laughs> he really? also likes yeah. to drink. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice one um yeah uh yeah i just want to say thank you to the three of you it's been great having you here and, and connecting and talking and sharing together and um yeah very grateful um thanks for everything that you, you brought today um uh, i i really hope that we for the people on, on online i really or anyone who watches this down the line you know i really hope that you get something out of it and, it touches you in some way, invokes some emotion, some new ways of thinking, uh, spurs you to do some something differently than you are now. And uh, yeah, uh, peace and love and all that hippie shit. Uh, but uh, yeah, um, enjoy, enjoy life. Um, have a beautiful evening, uh, ladies. If you have any uh, any parting messages, now would be the time. Well, uh, yeah, if anyone is, is interested and in, like also brainstorming and like about creative resilience, please reach out. Same if someone would like to get a copy of Wild Child of the Universe, you can reach out to me through Facebook or, or Instagram. Thank you very much. And thank you also for, for this is the first time I'm doing a panel. Uh, so I feel a lot of gratitude in, yeah, using storytelling to, to connect and hopefully yeah, we can all roar and compose more traumas with the times that come ahead. Thank you. Yeah, also from my side, I'm uh, very honored to be part of you all here. You're such amazing human beings and I was very glad to might have helped some of you out. Um, also, you can reach out to me uh, via my socials uh, for coachings or just for questions or just for a chat. Um, so stay out there stay positive and uh yeah <laughs> thank you dan and paula for for being such cool hosts and uh, also for catalyst music and ctm festival for organizing this i think this is a super super important topic and thank you daisy and miriam it was so rewarding to hear and see you thank you thank you for this heart opening event really, I felt really good connection. Thank you. And the same, you can reach out to me if you're interested in Pancha Karma. If you want to participate, you are very welcome. So you will get the information. Uh, I think you will just, maybe you can send them or yeah. Okay. Thank you. Lovely, nice one. And last, lastly, just to mention, so uh, we will gather, we being Phil Conspiracy, we'll gather um, links and socials and all of some of the, the, the finer points of, of, of what we talked about today, and we'll put them into a post on the website. Uh, so please go to feelconspiracy.com and subscribe there. Don't forget, you'll get a 10% off good test if you subscribe to the mailing list this is our cheap way of getting you to subscribe <laughs> um and yeah lastly uh, very lastly we have uh, more a couple more events as part of ctm for spiel um one on saturday which paula will be hosting um about the cooperative models versus the normal models uh, in the music industry um so that's on saturday what time is it at three is it at 3 p.m so don't miss that. And uh, same same format online. And then on Sunday, uh, we have um, music, video performances um, from all, all kinds of genres and styles, um, including a, a set from yours truly, 
so yeah tune in that's going out on threads radio what time does it start uh, 2 p.m. that starts at 2 p.m so that's threads radio.com or just see the event go to field conspiracy on facebook and you'll see the event there and you can see us all doing our thing but yeah much love thanks a million again ladies have a lovely evening yeah see you later bye bye <laughs> ciao ciao